What's going on guys? I'm Chuck Dix. Welcome back. It's great to see you. In this video, I'm excited to talk to you about Hell Let Loose, specifically the spectator cam. With update 9, that was one of the big things that came out. And I gotta tell you, just version 1 alone has been mind-blowing. I've used a lot of admin cams or spectator cams across a bunch of different games in various genres. And this is just one of the smoothest. It's, it's clean, it's, it's, it's quick, not too fast, stays on track with the players, gives you a full view of the entire battlefield. It's just, it's just awesome. So we're gonna talk about how to use it. Then I'm gonna talk to you about ways I see it utilized in the game and for the meta. And finally, I'm gonna pull some questions off the Steam form and the Reddit and give you my opinion or answer. I'm a part of Never Play Alone. You can join us in the Discord where you can come as you are and leave when you want. The URL is right there. Look forward to playing with you soon. Let's get into the video. So right away, the bad news is, this is not available to everyone. The spectator role must be assigned by a server owner or a high level administrator with the privileges to assign roles to other users. Now there are ways around this. You can one, rent a game server. We would suggest Nitrado as they are our official partners. The affiliate link is in the description below. Or you can join a team, become an admin, or make friends and get temporary access to say an event server that they don't use often uh, to create content. But that's the only way you'll be able to get this camera. Assuming you have the spectator role, we suggest you create a locked unit. You have to spawn in to use the camera. Once you spawn in, hit the end button and you will get this glorious view right here. In order to get rid of the tooltip on the right and the big words admin camera no player selected, you can tap the home button to first remove the tooltip on the right and then the words in the center of the screen. You move forward, backwards, left and right using the WASD keys and can look left, right, up and down with your mouse. There are five highlight modes available. By default, it is target only, then there is all, then you have all friendlies, all enemies, and off. Friendlies will always highlight in a green color, enemies in an orange color. Buildable items like nodes, garrisons, outposts, sandbags, etc. will not highlight. Tanks, trucks, any vehicle. It's gonna light up orange or green depending on which highlight mode you have enabled. I prefer the highlight mode to be off because I want it to look how it does when you're playing the game. It's really useful when you're flying overhead and you're trying to locate a vehicle really quickly because they're, they're huge blobs of orange or green. Let's just sit here and watch Roncon dominating. If you want to take immersion to the next level, just do the opposite of what every experienced Tell That Loose player tells one newbie at least a hundred times. Turn all your nameplates all the way down to the left. Turn everything off. I like to have my dead body delay all the way up so it's five minutes of corpses. But this is what it looks like. You get to watch that Axis guy creep around the hedge, lay out the allies, dude. Cool, so this right here is the HUD that comes up when you press the enter button on your keyboard and you can snap to any player. I had target only highlight mode enabled here, so that's why he's green. It will keep whatever highlight mode you have when you snap to that player. This third person perspective is really nice. Press G to unlock from the target and get that free camera or press R to unlock the rotation and get a free kind of look around the player by moving your mouse left to right up and down. And in addition to moving your mouse, you can also mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down to scroll out and scroll in closer to the player, which gives you some really cool perspectives. That's just about everything there is to the admin cam, except for the clipping, which is just something that allows you to like go through buildings. But you'll probably see me clipping through some buildings or uh, you saw me clip through a tank. It just allows you to get through walls to be able to see things faster versus having to go over the building, that kind of stuff. Let's talk a little bit about the utility of the spectator cam and ways that it is going to potentially benefit the game. First and foremost, development of gameplay. 
this is going to be something where we can record footage, give visual evidence, and show a, a big picture view of what is going on and why things may need to change in the meta or in the map design or point layouts or just all kinds of things can come from having this huge overview and then being able to get more granular and take a look at various players in a variety of situations and positions. This can definitely lead to some improvements. The next bullet point would be catching bad actors. So anybody who would be using cheats or map glitches, those are obviously going to be something that's utilized here with the spectator mode because there's no like admin cam icon on the map floating around showing where the admin is looking. So the person who may be using an exploit will have no idea. Another bullet point would be these sweeping cinematic shots. The devs have put so much effort and work into making the battlefield look identical to when this fight actually happened in history. But you could definitely pay homage to the work that developers have put into getting these maps to be as historically accurate and closely match up to the actual battles. So that's really awesome that we get to use the spectator cam to do these sweeping cinematic shots. And then probably the last bullet point is the competitive play and shout casting. That's going to be really, really sweet to see. For those of y'all who don't know, there's tournaments and invitationals and there's constant uh, organized matches. So if you're not involved in those, definitely keep an eye out. Look at the official teams that are out there. There's plenty of them. Most of them have servers. And if they don't, then they're usually on the Reddit page. There's a lot of opportunities for watching competitive play. I think in conjunction with the boots on the ground stream that recon or a tank gunner or somebody like that uh, can provide, the spectator mode is an additional layer that sweetens up that recipe and makes it something even more special to watch. But again, the main focus here is having the spectator cam improve the gameplay and further push the development towards a place where everything is improved for all players, casual and competitive. Now the third part of this video is going to be discussing some frequently uh, mentioned comments or questions from the Steam forums and the Reddit. Let's jump right into it. The camera should not be live and it will be abused in competitions. To that I would say you should play on servers that have administrators with good intentions, reputation, and uh, servers and teams that have integrity. There are many teams that have been around for a long time and uh, it's not hard to find them. As far as the competitive matches go, I think a solution would be to have a third party be that, that spectator camera guy that would not have a vested interest in the win or loss of either team and therefore would not feed any information to either team. I assume that's what you're talking about. With regards to live streaming the matches, this is already happening. There are already live streaming matches. It's not been an issue. Shout out to Das Altberg. It's going to be good for cinematic movies and people want to see replays of the matches. I agree, replays of the matches would be awesome to see. Uh, I don't know what that would require from server space and uh, uploading and downloading to, to rewatch it. Obviously, there are certain games that do have that functionality. PUBG comes to mind. But for this game right now, with version one spectator cam being presented to us a week ago, it's we'll see. We'll see what happens. And, oh, for the cinematic movies, I can confirm there's already projects lined up. Hopefully we'll see some cinematic movies from within the game very soon. What relevance does the spectator mode have on official servers? As you saw, the server owner or admin needs to give privilege to spectator mode, so therefore the official servers not having any admins will not have any relevance whatsoever. That might change in the future, but for right now, it's not relevant at all. Maybe only for Black Matter's team and Team 17's QA department. Other comments that came up were how the camera is going to take up one player slot on the server. Yes, this has been addressed. It will take up one player slot. 
there's obviously been a lot of folks asking if there can be 101 slots and that kind of thing. There really hasn't been an official answer outside of, you know, that's the way it is. And I'm pretty sure that's just going to be the way it is. But you never know. We'll see. Another comment was, will the spectator mode be able to take POV of the player? That is a great idea. I would love to be able to get in the same view of the player from the first person perspective. You know, it's probably in their pipeline. They got the V1 out and we're having a blast with it. But yes, having that extra that first person point of view would be helpful to police cheating and, and that kind of thing. So we'll see. I'm Chuck Dix. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe. I'm live on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you can catch me sporadically on YouTube. There are links in the description below. Please check them out and find me in the Never Play Alone Discord server. Until next time, keep chucking.